Welcome back. In the previous videos, I talked about the SVM, I talked about its idea, and also how to develop this idea theoretically, and we ended up with this optimization problem that we solved. So let me just give you a recall of this idea. So the main idea is to find the widest margin or the widest street that would separate that would separate my data linearly and then once I, once I find this widest margin the decision boundary is in between or in the middle of this margin and in this way I separate perfectly my training samples with a line but so this idea or the support vector machine is called the hard support vector machine and it can also be called the hard margin classifier so this is basically the same thing but this hard support vector machine has a major drawback which is its assumption and if you remember the assumption is that the training samples or the training data is perfectly linearly separable so what if our data is not linearly separable which is usually the case in practical applications so in most practical applications what I have is an overlap between the positive samples and the negative samples or an overlap in general between the samples of the different classes so this is an example of that overlap say that I have for example a negative sample here and a positive sample here so now there is no line on earth that would separate this data that would separate this data perfectly and this means that the hard SVM would fail so therefore what we want to do is to tweak that idea of the hard support vector machine and of course we need an idea and the main idea to deal with that problem is that we will allow some violations of the original constraint so this is the original constraint and what we want to do is to allow some violations now what we need to do is to measure this violation for a given training sample and we measure that by using a variable called the slack so this is the slack and this thing here measures the violation for a given training sample xi now how we can see that visually so what is this slack what does this slack exactly represents well let's take a given training sample for example this one which is incorrectly classified so we have here in this training data we have two samples that are incorrectly classified this is the first and this is the second okay so this training sample here negative training sample normally should be on the left side of this margin here in other words we have this much of violation so this is the violation or the amount of violation for this particular negative training sample so let me denote this xi1 and for this positive sample even if it's correctly classified we have a violation because it should be on the right side of this margin so this is the amount of violation for this particular sample and I would name it Xi2 
Now the question is how to define that mathematically. Well, this is this can be done easily just by adding or by, by modifying the constraint so that we accept a given violation which is denoted psi i. So now what we can do is to solve the following optimization problem and of course we need to define a given slack for each training sample. And what you need to know about this slack is that this slack is always a positive value. However, this is not what we do in practice because we don't have anything, because we cannot minimize the overall slack. So when we use the following constraint, all what we are saying is that for a particular training sample, the slack for the violation should be higher, uh, should be smaller rather than this xi i. And in fact, what we want to do is to minimize the overall slack. So we want to minimize the overall slack, which is equal, of course, this overall slack is equal to the summation of particular slacks or of all individual slacks from i equal 1 to m. So this gives me the overall slack, and what I want to do is to minimize that. So now what I have is two optimization problems. So this is the first thing that I want to minimize, and this is the second cost function that I want to minimize. So I can fuse these two constraints, or rather these two cost functions into one cost function by just adding them up. So I can write, so I can say, I can say minimize the following constraint, or minimize the following cost function, which is the previous cost function for W and B, but now I want also to minimize the overall slack. So I want to find the vector slack that would minimize this cost function. And as I said, the total slack is just equal to the summation of the individual slacks. And the constraint is written in this form. So this is the previous constraint. So this is now the new optimization problem we need to solve. So we want to find the W and the B and also the slack that would minimize this expression. Now what I want to talk about is a trade-off aspect in this optimization problem. So we are trying to minimize this term. So minimizing this entire expression means that we want to minimize this term and also minimize this term here. By minimizing the first term, what we are saying is that we want to decrease the w and this means that we want to increase the width of the margin. And by the way, if you have forgotten about it, this is the width of the margin that we are trying to increase. But in the same time, when I'm saying decrease the overall slack, this means that I'm, I, I am trying to decrease the width of the margin. And probably it's not clear for you why when we decrease the overall slack, we need to decrease the width of the margin. So I'll talk about that now. So this is a, let's consider a particular data point, say I have a plus here, or rather here. So this is a positive training sample, and its corresponding slack is this much. Now, if I want to avoid that violation, 
what I need to do is to minimize the width of the margin. So let's consider a new width of the margin, say this particular width here. This is my new width of the margin, this is my new margin, and this is its associated width. Now I don't have, for that particular width, I don't have any violation for this positive sample here. So the slack now is zero for that particular trading sample. And this is the reason why when we minimize the slack, we need also to minimize the width of the margin. So in other words, what we are trying to do here is to maximize the width and at the same time minimize the width. So we have here, we have a trade-off. So what this algorithm would do is it'll try to increase the margin such that our model generalizes the data better and at the same time it will try not to increase that too much so the overall slack is very high. But so far this is of course not the optimization problem we solve in practice and, and of course we are very close to what we do in practice and the reason why this is the case is because we want to control the overall slack so for this optimization problem we have no control on the overall slack so what if we want or rather sorry on the trade-off So, what if we want to control the trade-off? So, to control the trade-off, what we need to do is just to add a constant here, or rather multiply this slack by a constant, C. This is a control constant that we can set based on experiments. I will talk about that in a moment, how to set this constant C. But for now, we need, we need to understand what's the meaning of that or what's the effect of that constant that is when we decrease this constant what it's what what is its effect on our model and also when we decrease this constant what is its effect on our model so for that let's consider a very small value for the constant c say that c tends to be zero so if C tends to be zero or even zero, this means that the term of the slack is not important. Even if the slack is very, very high, then this has no effect on this expression or on the value of this expression. And this means that when C decreases, we have, or rather, this slack is not important. In other words, decreasing the value of C allows more violations, so we increase the number of violations. However, in the other case when C is very high, say that for example C is infinity or any high value, the smallest amount of slack would have a very high effect on this overall expression. And this means that the slack is very, very important and it's, you know, taken into account. It has a high weight. Therefore, when I increase the constant C, or as I increase the constant C, the number of violations decreases. And of course, on, I'm talking about the violations on the training data set. So this is the interpretation of C and you can see that programmatically there are many packages there and for example on scikit-learn you can implement the support vector machine and control that parameter C but now the question is how to set the best value of C what is the best value of C well this is in practice set by a process that is called the cross-validation. So basically the cross-validation is a method that allows you to select 
between the different machine learning algorithms and it has also other applications such as this application here where you can choose the best parameter of my model so what I do is that I plot a curve so here in this axis I have the value of C so typically the value of C is between 1 and 100 so I can you know change the value of C and as I change the value of C I measure the error given by the cross validation so the overall pattern of this curve of the curve that I get so normally I don't get exactly a curve I just get some points like that and it's obvious that the best value of C is just the value that is associated with the smallest error given by the cross validation and this is how we can choose the value of C so now what I've been talking about so far is called the soft support vector machine and the difference between the soft support vector machine and the hard support vector machine is that in the hard support vector machine all of the training samples are should be correctly classified and we don't tolerate any violation of this constraint whereas in the case of the, the soft support vector machine we tolerate some violations and this is the reason why we introduced the term soft here and this works better in cases, in practical cases, when we have an overlap between the uh, training samples of different classes.